Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io, and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and implications of emerging science and technology. I'm Ryan O'Shea, and I'll be your host. Welcome to 2019, and the first rejuvenation roundup of the new year. There is quite a bit of news to go through and upcoming events to look forward to, so let's get started. Remember, to find out more about any of these topics, you can visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. Last month, we announced our second Ending Age-Related Disease Conference, which will again be held in July at the Cooper Union in New York City. But this time, we're thinking bigger. We'll have a two-day conference rather than just one, which means more speakers and more panels. The main topics of this year will be progress in aging research and implementation of rejuvenation biotechnologies from the lab to the clinic, touching upon all aspects from investments to legal frameworks. Among the confirmed speakers are Dr. Vera Gorbanova of Rochester University, Dr. Alex Zavarankov of Insilico Medicine, Dr. Aubrey de Grey of the SENS Research Foundation, Dr. Vadim Gladyshev of Harvard Medical School, and Reason of Repair Biotechnologies. If you're up for a two-day immersion into the world of rejuvenation, come join us on July 11th and 12th. You can book your tickets at lifespan.io forward slash roundup Early bird prices last until March 31st. Lifespan.io has launched a series of webinars in which our monthly supporters, also known as Lifespan Heroes, can participate. The first webinar of the series, held on January 28th, saw the MitoSens team discussing mitochondrial mutations in a two-hour panel, during which they also answered many interesting questions from those in attendance. Here's Oliver Medvedic and Steve Hill with more on this new initiative. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Oliver and Steve. Uh, we're here to present a summary of our first webinar. We had a great uh, roundtable discussion with uh, Aubrey de Grey, um, Michael Oki O'Connor, uh, Michael Ray, and Luta from Sense. And we discussed their MinorSense project, which was one of the first projects that we launched out of uh, Lifespan.io. And it was successfully launched. They were published in a peer-reviewed journal. And we wanted to basically have a follow-up discussion. And joining us were uh, members of our Heroes team who make generous donations to Lifespan.io. And basically, I'm going to present to you a brief summary of what was discussed. So we had a pretty good turnout. We had lots of guests. Uh, we learned a lot of interesting things about mitochondria, how they create energy, how they become damaged, and how that damage drives the aging process, and some of the approaches that the MitoSense team used in their uh, groundbreaking paper in which they basically performed something called uh, allotopic gene expression, or basically moving genes from mitochondria to the nucleus to essentially put them into a safe zone or a bunker so the genes are not damaged. And essentially, the hypothesis here was to kind of complete the job that evolutionary biology hasn't finished. Um, so right now, they're working on perfecting their te technique for all 13 mitochondrial genes so that they can all be transferred to the cell nucleus. Um, so they gave us updates on some of the new techniques that they're working on. They're planning on taking their mitochondrial repair approach, mitosense, to mice. So they're working on a mice model now so that they can see if they can get a proof of concept in living animals and show that they can repair damaged mitochondria within a mammalian system. Aubrey also had a prediction that was uh, much more optimistic for robust human rejuvenation, basically uh, using it to a 50-50 chance of 18 years from 20 due to the increasing evidence for damage crosstalk. So basically, if you've been keeping up with the hallmarks of aging, aging has been sort of all the different characteristics and kind of, uh, of aging and all the different things can go wrong. You can bin them into different compartments, much like the hallmarks of cancer. Um, but it turns out that, you know, over the years, what we've learned is a lot of these pathways are not entirely orthologous or isolated from one another. They basically influence one another. One other aspect of this that Aubrey mentioned was that the seven sense damage categories, they appear to interact with each other far more than originally thought as a result of 
uh, all of this research. So what that basically means is, you know, things that you work on in one category will have a spillover effect into the other category. So all of this, you know, research is interlinked in the sense that if you tackle one aspect of aging, you could have a synergistic response uh, and, you know, um, have more of an effect, positive effect than you initially anticipated. Uh, also, we learned that the Glycosens project, so that's another project from SENS, uh, looking at uh, cross-linking um, in the extracellular matrix. The Glycosens project is currently investigating if the cross-linking uh, agent glucosapine is the real problem in collaboration with Jonathan Clark at Brabaham Institute in the UK. This is in unison with their other project at Yale, seeking to develop therapies that can break down the, the uh, glucosapine cross-links. So, this was a really popular webinar. Uh, we all had a lot of fun. It, it went on for about two hours. Um, that's exactly how much time we had allotted. And uh, there were a lot of good questions that were asked. Um, and certainly all of our invited guests, Aubrey, Oki, Michael, and Lutha, I think they, they really enjoyed the interactions with everybody. And uh, as a result, we will definitely be doing more webinars with other researchers for our heroes in the future. Yeah, and on that note, if anybody does have some suggestions of who you might like to see uh, on the next webinar, do let us know and get in touch. And uh, I would just add that uh, I'd like to thank everybody, myself as well, who turned up and made it such a success. We'll see you soon. All webinars are recorded and will eventually be made available for everyone to watch. If you wish to join the next webinar, consider becoming a Lifespan Hero today. This month, we published two interviews of note. One was with Dr. Chris Verberg, the expert nutritionist from the Free University of Brussels, and the other with Dr. Leonid Peshkin of Harvard Medical School. Both have an interest in using AI for aging research, but have different takes on when we could see major advancements in this work. To read these interviews, visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. Here's a lifespan.io campaign update. The age meter, the device that was crowdfunded on Lifespan.io back in 2017 was showcased during the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And now for our research roundup. A human pilot study conducted by Mayo Clinic researchers shows promising results on the senolytics effect of desatinib and quercetin on the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Unity Biotechnologies has recently started developing a new senolytic drug aimed at the treatment of age-related eye diseases. The company is also currently running a human trial on senolytics for the treatment of osteoarthritis in the knee. Studies published in Nature and Science found that healthy esophagus tissue carries more cancer-associated mutations than healthy skin tissue. The effect is magnified in older people versus younger ones. According to a study published in Nature Metabolism, NMN, a precursor to the DNA repair molecule NAD, can enter the cell to turn into NAD without first having to be converted into nicotinamide riboside. A new study by the University of Louisville shows that the bacteria responsible for chronic periodontitis might play a role in Alzheimer's disease. A drug targeting enzymes of those bacteria will soon undergo human clinical trials to test its efficacy in cases of mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. A study by Korean scientists published on Aging Cell found that the increase of free radicals observed in aging induces an increase of cholesterol uptake and synthesis in the liver, which may contribute to excess cholesterol in old age. According to University of California scientists, fasting influences the circadian rhythm of the body. The research, conducted on mice, shows that fasting induces metabolic changes that, particularly in the case of liver and skeletal muscle tissue, have protective effects against aging. A study by the renowned Buck Institute found that the rejuvenation of the liver observed in parabiosis, the linking of the circulatory systems of two living organisms, is dependent on a factor called MANF, which is known to decline with age. The Norwegian University of Science and Technology has found a strong link between higher fitness and lower risk of heart attack. The researchers found that even an increase of just 3.5 points on the peak oxygen uptake scale resulted in a 15% lower risk of heart attack. You can find more information on any of the studies mentioned in our research roundup at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. And now for the news nuggets. 
Barclays Bank has produced a video featuring many aging research and investment experts discussing the current accelerating rate of progress in biological sciences that might soon lead us to live longer, healthier lives and the advantages that this will bring. Here's a preview of their video. What if you could live to 120? New developments in bioscience mean that we could soon be living dramatically longer, healthier lives. We have a very good chance of getting to 110 or 120 within 30 years. Increasing longevity is an outcome of some of these incredible developments in healthcare that we're seeing. With longer lives come also higher growth. With a higher growth, that means we can do more. We will be living longer and in better health, and that presents opportunities. What could a longer life mean for you, your family, and your investments? The 2018 Winter Fundraiser by the SENS Research Foundation, which had an original goal of $500,000, ended up bringing in over three quarters of a million, thanks in part to $350,000 donated by Vitalik Buterin, a crypto millionaire and the co-founder of Ethereum. Forbes contributor Tina Woods recently provided an optimistic overview of the rejuvenation industry, emphasizing the importance of pushing forward the innovations that will allow everyone to benefit from the longevity dividend. As she points out, longevity may soon no longer be the prerogative of a few rich people. British billionaire Jim Mellon's company, Juvenescence, raised the first $46 million out of the planned 100 for a Series B financing round to further support the development of rejuvenation drugs and related projects in his portfolio. They hope to move quickly towards commercialization. Next Big Future briefly reported on 45 gene therapies that, if delivered in combination in animal models, can prevent multiple diseases of aging at once. George Church's early startup, Rejuvenate Bio, hopes to bring the treatment to humans by the mid-2020s. According to a study from In Silico Medicine, young smokers age up to twice as fast as non-smokers. Using AI, the team analyzed blood samples from both smokers and non-smokers, and the predicted biological age of nearly half of the smokers was up to 10 years more than their chronological age. The documentary Immortality or Bust, which features transhumanist Zoltan Istvan traveling around the U.S. on a coffin-shaped immortality bus, to advocate for life extension and scientific research, won the Breakout Award at the Raw Science Film Festival in Los Angeles. According to a study published in the journal Aging, wearable technologies such as smartwatches could provide a way for physicians to track the aging of patients and their risk of developing age-related conditions in the future. Coming up in February, the Longevity Leaders Conference will be held on February 4th in St. Paul's, London, among the featured speakers are Dr. Aubrey de Grey from the SENS Research Foundation and Dr. Alex Zavronkov from In Silico Medicine. LEAF Board Director Steve Hill will also moderate a panel. The fourth annual Body Hacks Human Augmentation Conference will be held again in Austin, Texas. The event, taking place from February 23rd to 24th, brings together bio artists, startups, early adopters, researchers, and community leaders in self directed human augmentative technologies. This year, Body Hacks features a personal genetic data review workshop and a panel on ethics. Links to tickets for these events can be found at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. That's it for the first episode of 2019 for the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about it on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuregrind.org. Once again, I'm your host, Ryan O'Shea, and on behalf of the team at LEAF, we wanted to thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Mm -hmm.